Some of the football fans from Gen Y will remember the year 2002 for a few things. Like Zidane's volley versus Leverkusen, for example. Or the rise of Arsenal's Invincibles. Arsene Wenger have another trophy in the Or the Korea Japan World Cup, along with that golden mohawk. However, there's one thing perhaps no one will remember quite as much, and that's the introduction of the Fantasy Premier League as we know it today. Uh, you see, that was in 2002, but Fantasy Premier League has been around for a while. Well, at least Fantasy Sport has been around for a while. So the question is, how did Fantasy Football become so popular? The first official Fantasy League in England was invented in the early 90s. But to trace back the earliest version of any Fantasy Sport, we need to travel across the Atlantic. The year was 1960 and a keen baseball fan by the name of John Bergeson, who was also a programmer, had some free time in his hands to create a simulation for baseball players. Now for something in the 60s, that was an unbelievable achievement. You could select the players based on stats that you feed into the machine and you could have teams made out of those stats to play against one another. So while this is not really fantasy sport per se, the statistical simulation was the start of something truly magical and it laid the foundation of simulation in sport as we know it today. Soon after fantasy football, well the other football was developed by Bill Winkenbach in 1962. And determination, Winkenbach's team would emerge victorious. They had created the first set of rules and the game's very first league, Goppel. The Greater Oakland Professional Pigskin Prediction League. And thus, the legend of fantasy football was born. But it wasn't until the 80s that the basis of fantasy sport was built. Inspired from a fantasy baseball game created by Bill Gamson in the 60s, a guy called Daniel Okrent, along with a few others, created the Rotisserie League Baseball, which eventually became the model for a lot of the fantasy games as we know it today. And if anything, that did was inspire this Italian guy, Riccardo Albini. I had the French so fucking bastard. <laughs> funny guy. He picked up the concept during a trip to New York and took it back to Milan with him. And with that, Italy saw a rise in fantasy sport, mostly thanks to a newspaper, La Gazzetta dello Sport. They hosted the game on their pages from the summer of 1994, and it was ridiculously popular. They projected 10,000 players, but during that year alone, 70,000 players joined. And keep in mind, we're still in the early 90s. Uh, but let's get back to England. Meet Andrew Weinstein, yet another guy inspired by fantasy baseball from the 80s. So much so that he created Fantasy League Limited in 1991, and the idea turned heads instantly in England. Just like in Italy, newspapers like the Daily Telegraph jumped in to take the opportunity. The ad for these fantasy leagues regularly appeared in the popular 90 Minutes magazine. You didn't have smartphones back then, obviously, so you had a deadline every week to pick your team cut up magazines and coupons and send it to the papers. However, there was one thing that really made fantasy football popular in England. The show was hosted by David Baddiel and Frank Skinner and it continued in a three-part series until 1996. Now unlike the magazines, the format of the show had a fantasy league based on teams selected by the various invited celebrities rather than the viewers who watched the show. And you don't know Gallagher from the Oasis. The years that followed, the show returned for special tournaments like the 1996 Euros and the 1998 World Cup. And simultaneously, something really cool was happening as well. An online network called Internet. The Internet is a system of thousands. Finally, your Internet is ready. 
with AT&T World Riding on the internet wagon, Premier League released an official website in 2002 and with that they brought the digital version of the Fantasy Premier League. Since then, the Fantasy Premier League has seen a steady rise in users. But what makes us play the game so much? What is it that millions of players share with each other that make them play the game like addicts? Now, if you want to get scientific, research shows that one of the biggest motivators for playing the game is the feeling of ownership. And to me, that makes sense. Even for once a week, we are the managers. We are the players on the pitch and we are the scoreboard. With every goal, with every clean sheet and with every yellow card, our experience broadens as we immerse ourselves further into the game. Today, it's evident that Fantasy Premier League has become an integral part of the fan experience. And simply being a bystander and watching the game is just not enough. The teams that we build are not just virtual entities, but for those of us who are dedicated, it is a reflection of our love for the sport and a reminder that in the end, football is all about the experience. Once again to Fantasy Football. This week we'll be showing you how to play Fantasy Football again because apparently last week none of you understood it.